This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Long story short, I had a single weekend to make a game and the theme was use enemies as weapons. How cool is that? I love strategy games, RTS, turn-based, you name it, from Starcraft to Age of Empires, Civilization, and all the classics. So I asked myself, which strategy game lets you use enemies as weapons? Into the Bridge, of course. If you haven't played Into the Bridge yet, give it a shot. It's a solid game and an amazing lesson in game design. So I went with a strategy game. Picture this, controlling giant mechs that throw punch at the enemies. Punch them into each other for bonus damage. Kinda like using them as weapons, right? And for that, that punch had to pack a punch. The punch had to be impactful and juicy, so check this out. So to test this concept, I made a super basic isometric tile and I manually placed them to create a simple level. I threw in the bare minimum, a unit that looks like a chewed gun and some basic gameplay where you have to click on end turn to move it again. Real groundbreaking stuff, I know. Now the crucial part. I wanted to test the ability to push enemies around with a punch. They take extra damage if they hit the wall at the end of the map. Just assume there's an invisible wall there, okay? And also, both enemies are going to take damage if you push them into each other. And you know what? It's surprisingly fun to strategically position your chewed gun units and to wreck some enemies with this mechanic. After a few hours, I'm like, yeah, this is the game I'm making. Now, let's start with the production. Since the game gen lasted a single weekend, I aimed for a minimalistic art style. I went to coolers.co, smashed the spacebar for a while, and ended up with this palette. So I duplicated the palette and made a dark shade of each one of the colors. And looking back, what the hell was I thinking? This color palette is kind of garbage. But hey, limitations, right? Everybody says that having limitations is a good thing. And in my case, the limitation was very few ugly colors to work with. Then I browsed Pinterest and ArtStation for some mecha inspiration. I looked at different art styles to see how I could do something minimalistic enough to finish the game in a weekend, but that had the potential to expand beyond the game gen. I drew a basic mountain tile to serve as an obstacle, and then I screenshotted the level that I put together in the game engine editor and brought it to my image editing software. I doodled some characters on top of the image with two colors, no fancy stuff, the bare minimum to be able to say, this is a giant mecha. Even though it's an isometric game, I only drew the characters once since the orientation of the characters is not important, so you will never see the back of the characters, for example. Inspired by classic RTS games, I thought it would be cool to see the pilots when you select a mecha. Goliath online. Go ahead, Tacom. So I drew the portrait of the pilots using that same limited set of colors. Then the enemies. I went for a less humanoid shape, and we ended up with a mecha spider, a crab thing, and this dangerous guy that I call Goro. Because why not? I mean, it's not so bad, right? Kind of like Into the Bridge, I wanted the game to be easy to understand. Instead of complicated stats like 3000 health and attacks dealing 360 damage plus positioning modifier with the multiplier based on obscure stats and nah, that's too much math. I went with a simple system where you see exactly how much HP each character has. And it's like three, not a bazillion. Then I made different levels, ramping up the enemy's difficulty as you go. They've got slightly different behavior and stats, but nothing too crazy. Now, learning strategy games is never a walk in the park. And making something in one weekend that is possible to learn is a challenge. So I slept together a first level where you fight some barrels. Yeah, barrels. The idea was to make the player familiar with the controls and to figure out how the push mechanic works. The tutorial level ended up having lots of pop-ups, like the web in the 2000s. I think it gets the job done. People actually learn how to play the game solely based on this tutorial. Surprisingly effective. I wanted to sprinkle in a reward at the end, so I drew this cutscene. It's not really a cutscene, just some key art with the mecha straight up punching an enemy. So the player is rewarded with this visual masterpiece if they beat the game. For all the push mechanics, I used the concept of vectors. 
and no matter what game engine are you using, you will probably have to deal with vectors at some point. It doesn't matter if in 2D or 3D. I was looking for a refresher on the subject and I found an easy and interactive way to learn about this concept. Check this out. Brilliant. Whether you are a complete beginner or if you already know how to code, Brilliant has content that matches your skill level and interests. If you are looking to develop your skills in programming, algorithm thinking and math, all in an easy and fun way, Brilliant has got you covered. Their thinking in code and creative coding course are excellent if you are just getting started. If you have more experience, then the data structure course might finally allow you to understand this concept. As I was saying, I just took their course on vectors as a refresher and it is great. They literally use video game as an example in their interactive lessons. And when developing a game, you gotta use math. A game engine might help you, but still knowing math and vectors will allow you to use the game engine to its full potential. What sets Brilliant apart is how interactive the lessons are. There you can be hands-on, even on subjects that are tough to digest. So, to try everything Brilliant has to offer free for the first 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Zizako or click in the link in the description down below. And if you are among the first 200 folks to sign up, you will also get 20% off Brilliant annual premium subscription. A big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. Sound time. I found some cool free assets that fit the retro vibe like a glove. Yeah, 8 bits of glory. For the soundtrack, I could count on the help of Austin Kinney, sent in a college of all the levels we had, suggested the musical vibe that could work, and let me tell you, Austin delivered. Five tracks in total that you can listen on his SoundCloud page. Quality stuff. End of the jam, I submit the game in time and the initial reception was fantastic. I was stoked with the initial feedback and guess what? We got second place. Maybe I didn't dive as deep into the team as some others did, but hey, that's cool. Overall, I'm proud of what I was able to make in just one wild weekend. Oh, and by the way, I threw in a feedback form within the game. It was really neat to see that one of the biggest complaints was that the game was too short. They wanted more. Now, with the inspiration board that I made at the start, the mechas, the mock-up, this art style, I knew this game could go even further. Short and sweet was the plan, but the hunger for more was real. Once the game gen ended, I released an update. Proper settings menu, adaptive screen resolution, which is harder to make than it seems when you are picky about pixel art. What about real pathfinding? Yeah, that's seen now. Before, there were tiles you couldn't land on. It didn't took into account the distance between the tiles. So I wrote a pathfinding based on an amazing article by Red Blob Games. Plus, I released a downloadable version for Windows, Mac and Linux. Because options, right? You can play Mecha Genesis Tactics for free on itch.io. No need to download and you can even play it on your phone if you want. Check the link in the description. You fool! This isn't even my final form! I think the concept of Mecha Genesis Tactics can go even further. There are not many turn-based strategy games that keep things simple yet deep, like Into the Bridge. That's why I kept working on the game to see if it was worth making it into a full product. I added the following. Save slots. Some basic lore. An HQ where you can mess with the loadouts and pick missions. Items that actually give new abilities to the mechas, not just stat changes. Progression with new mechas, each with their own tricks. And a bunch of more enemies that can mess with your mechas. The improved enemies can push, call reinforcements, and immobilize your mechas. There is a much improved version of Mecha Genesis Tactics in the order, but let's be real, I'm not sure if it is going to be a commercially viable game. Time is a limited resource, and choosing to work in one game means giving up on another. Between Awful Marker Bros, Mecha Genesis Tactics, Solo Sector Tactics, or some fresh project, I'm not sure which is the best. I will have to pick which one should be my main focus. Which one do you prefer? And if you are wondering why I didn't use Unity, Unreal, Godot or Game Maker to make this game, check out this video right here. A shout out to Game Dev Underground for putting together the game gen. I hope to see him back on YouTube. Subscribe for more and see you next time.